I'm now going to review the muscles that cross the hip and knee joints, or at least a few of them. The first one that I want to show you, first let me orient you, we're looking at the anterior aspect of the cat. Up here is its head. I'm going to come down here to the thigh. The cat is in a supine position. And the first muscle that I want you to see well, first of all, let's orient ourselves. Here is the femoral artery, nerve, and vein. And this most superficial muscle is the sartorius. Its origin is coming from the anterior superior iliac spine. And it's inserting down here on the tibia. The action of the sartorius is to flex, abduct, and later laterally rotate the thigh and flex the knee. Next, I'm going to show you the gracilis. The gracilis is this muscle right here. Gracilis means slender, and we all wish that the most medial aspect of our thighs were slender, don't we? So this is the gracilis. It has its origin on the pubis and insertion on the medial tibia. Its action is to flex the knee, adduct, and medially rotate the thigh. I'm going to reflect I've cut the gracilis in the belly of the muscle, and as I reflect it, you can see deep to it other adductors of the thigh. These two muscles that you are seeing here, this one and this one, these are actually muscles of the hamstring group. This is the semitendinosus, and this is the semimembranosus. The muscle next to the semimembranosus this one right here looks like a triangle. That's the adductor magnus. It has its origin on the ischium and pubis, and it inserts on the linea aspera of the femur. It adducts, flexes, and medially rotates the thigh. The muscle next to it is the adductor longus, shown here. The adductor longus has its origin um, on the pubis, near the pubic symphysis, and its insertion on the linea aspera. Its action is to adduct, flex, and medially rotate the thigh. The very small little muscle next to the adductor longus, I'm going to move it over, is the pectineus. It's the one closest to the femoral artery, nerve, and vein. And the pectineus has its origin on the pubis, its insertion on the posterior femur, and it adducts and flexes and medially rotates the thigh. Next I'm going to show you the muscles of the, of the quadriceps femoris group. I am reflecting back the sartorius and you are seeing the vastus medialis cut in the belly is the rectus femoris and then over here is the vastus lateralis. The rectus femoris has its origin on the anterior inferior iliac spine. Its insertion is on the patella and tibial tuberosity. Its action is to extend the knee and flex the thigh at the hip. The vastus lateralis has its origin on the greater trochanter and it too inserts on the patella and tibial tuberosity. And its action is to extend the knee. On the medial side, this is the vastus medialis. Its origin is on the linea aspera, and it inserts on the patella and tibial tuberosity. It extends the knee. The muscle that is deep to the rectus femoris, I'm going to retract the rectus femoris, and the muscle deep to it, right down here, is the vastus intermedius. Its origin is on the proximal femur, it inserts on the patella and tibial tuberosity, and its action is to extend the knee. I'm going to close this back up, put back up the sartorius, turn the cat laterally, reflect the sartorius a bit again. This muscle that you are seeing here that is inserting onto the iliotibial tract, you can see that right there. This is the tensor fascia lata. Its origin is on the iliac crest and anterior superior iliac spine. Its insertion, like I said, 
suit running to the knee, is the iliotibial tract. This is the fascia lata that ensheaths all the muscles of the thigh. I've had to cut it so I could get to the quadriceps femoris group. And the action is to steady the trunk on the thigh. 